Hello and uh, welcome to Five Excellence Tutorials. Well, in this video, we are going to solve a question from um, rotational motion, or if you like, circular motion. Yeah, so this problem, um, some, some students I think they have issues, but you know what we do here, right? Because here, happiness is understanding physics. So we explain to the extent that you have a comprehensive understanding about a problem. So the problem says a wheel of radius 25 centimeter has eight spokes. All right, so let me try to, to redraw. And then it has got eight spokes. Okay. So that is the axle. So we have eight spokes. And it is mounted on a fixed axle and is rotating at a constant angular speed omega. You shoot a 20 centimeter long arrow um, parallel to the axle through the wheel at a speed of six meters per second. Okay, the arrow and the spokes are supposed to be thin. Calculate the maximum value of omega or angular speed in those um, SI units so that the arrow just goes through without hitting any of the spokes. Does it matter where between the ax axle and the rim of the wheel you arm? If so, what is the best location? All right, so we want to, 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 to shoot a, an arrow through this rim. Now, one thing that you have to know is that the arrow that we're going to shoot, if we say this is a part of the rim where we have a spoke, this is a spoke and that is a spoke as well, all right? This is just a finger and also a stylus here. This is a spoke of the wheel, all right? What is going to happen is that when we shoot an arrow, an arrow has to pass between the two spokes, all right? It has to pass through the, 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 between the two spokes. Now, what you have to understand is that these two spokes, they make a certain angular displacement or this spoke, because the wheel is rotating, then this spoke, it will not be at this point up to the time the, the you shoot the, or, or the, what's this? The, the arrow is short. It's not going to be here. It is moving at, uh, at a speed of what? It's moving at, um, no, we don't know the constant speed at which it is moving, but we know the speed of the spoke that we're going to, to, to shoot which is six meter per second. But we need to know what would be the angular displacement of this spoke for it to move from this original position to the position of this spoke, because they'll be rotating. So this spoke will cover this position as it is going, as the spokes are covering the final from the initial position. So we need to know what is the angular speed or sorry, angular displacement. So now, <clears throat> how do we get? So if here on the screen, look on the screen, if I choose to say, I choose the spokes that I was talking about, I was talking about are these two, then I need to know the angular displacement there. Now, we know that the entire wheel is two pi, the circumference, not really the circumference, circumference is what, two pi, but, the entire uh, wheel is two pi, all right? Is two pi, but now this wheel, the entire what's this of the wheel, angular displacement is two pi. Now this wheel, it is what? Or rather we picked two 
spokes. Now, this wheel has been divided in eight uh, equal revolutions. So we have one eighth revolutions here. All right. So meaning that this angular displacement is basically two pi over eight, the angular displacement between the two spokes. So what we're going to have is pi over four as our angular displacement. So we have gotten the angular displacement. Now we need to know because we have an arrow that is being uh, short here. Now we need to know what time it will take for this arrow to pass, to move at this speed? Or what time it will take for the entire length of this arrow, 20 centimeter, to pass at this speed? What would be the time? Because this time is the time that we need to know and we are going to use that this wheel will be moving at. Or which is going to take this spoke to move from this initial position to this final position, if it is moving in that direction. Oh yeah, it's moving in that direction. All right. So now, what is the time? How do we get the time? So we know that speed is actually distance over time. Of this distance is the length of the arrow over time. So what we're going to have is that time equal to length over speed. So the time is going to be the length, which is 20 centimeter. So now this 20 centimeter, I think we can, um, we can convert it by this. Okay, so we know that a cent is negative 10 to the power negative two. Okay, so let me just do it from here. 20 centimeter times one meter over 100 centimeter, the conversion factor. So that what we're going to have is actually 0 0.2 meters. So here, I'm going to erase. I didn't want you to get confused by me doing the conversion just there. All right. So we're going to have 0 0.2 meters over the speed, which is six meter per second. So you have to always make sure that SI units are standard. So you can see meter and meter there. So the time here is going to be Zero point two divided by six meters, we have zero point zero three three. So let me take uh, three decimal places, seconds. Okay. So this is the time, and this time should be the same time that the wheel must take or the spokes must take to move from the initial angular position to another or final angular position, all right? I think you get it. Then now, what do we need now? What we need now is uh, the angular speed, all right? What will be the angular speed of this wheel? So what we do, we say, Angular speed, remember angular speed is basically the change in angular displacement over the change uh, in time. So the rate of change of angular displacement is angular speed. So what we're going to have is that this change is basically this one, which is pi over four divided by the time, which is 0 0.033 seconds. So angular displacement is going to be
but here we have 0 0.785. So this is in rad, of course, over 0 0.033 seconds. So we have 23.79 rad a second. So this should be the angular speed of, uh, of the wheel for the arrow at that speed six meter per second to pass through the two uh, spokes all right so this is in rad per second and we've been told as well to get the answer also in a in um in a rev per second so how do we get that one it's just by converting this one of which we know that Conversion factor, one revolution is two pi rad, right? So that, that rad and that rad goes, and then we're going to have 3 point, we have 3.79, it's going to be 3.79, rev the second. So this is going to be the angular speed in rev per second. Now, the last part of this question, let's look at the last part of this question. Okay, so this last part of the question, it's a little bit confusing, but I'll explain my position on this one. Does it matter where, um, where between the rim and the axle of the wheel you am? If so, what is the best location? Okay, so I want you um, here, when you say no, you must back your answer. And if you say yes, you must back your answer. So myself, I say, yes, it does matter where you am. So I've seen uh, some, someone told me, no, it doesn't matter and all that, but I'll explain my position. So I say, yes, it does matter where you am. Look at this. If we pick uh, the same way that we picked this point or these two, we picked these two, uh, what's this? These two spokes as the one that is going to pass, of which it can be these and that and all that. Now look at this. Of course, the angular displacement is the same. It's the same, it's uniform. Yeah, it's the same. So if we pick this point, that point, the angular displacement at that point, at that point, at that point, even at the, at the rim of the wheel, it's the same, the angular displacement is the same. But what differs here is the arc length, all right? The arc length. You're going to see that as you come from the axle, the arc length is small. And then as you are going towards the rim, the arc length is getting bigger, this arc length. Meaning that if you M near the axle, the chances are that you can you can miss uh, passing through these uh, two what's these spokes, and you can be able definitely to hit the spoke. But if you M near the the wheel or the rim of the wheel, you are going to see that you have higher chances. This the what's this can be there. The, the, can, the, the, spoke, um, the arrow can pass there, can pass there, can pass. Why? Because you have enough arc length. So arc length here, you see that the radius as well matters. As you are looking at 
the angular displacement being the arc length over that. So the arc length is the radius times this. Now, this angular displacement is constant. It's not changing. It's the same for a, at any position, at any point, it's the same. But what would be different is the radius from the center here to here. We are going to see that the radius will be small. So the arc length will be definitely small. But if you take it that side, you are going to see that the radius here is going to be big. So you can see that we are trying to say the radius there is it 25 centimeter. So 25 centimeter. If you get to multiply by the angular displacement, you are going to see that the arc length is going to be big, thereby giving you or accommodating that tolerance for the arrow to pass. So I believe that the position matters and the best location is near the rim of the wheel. That is the best position or location to aim your arrow. I believe uh, you got to understand uh, my point and how we got this one. And I believe that you have been helped as well. So give me uh, uh, reactions, like, share, and uh, also comment uh, so that we be able to improve as we go on. Thank you so much for your time.